Hey gang, Jack Allaire here, and today we are going to talk about televisions. Now, I was born in uh, 1977, the year of Star Wars, when the whole thing kicked off. Somewhere in space, this may all be happening right now. Growing up, we had one TV in the house. Now, I know to some people nowadays, that may be completely unimaginable, but we had one TV, we had two phones, phones plugged into the wall, phones in the house, and no tablets, no cell phones, because they didn't exist yet. Well, they existed, but they weren't commercially available. That's a story for another time. The only way that I ended up with a TV was when a uh, relative had a TV that they were no longer using and ended up giving to us. At least this is the story that I remember. And it uh, sat in my room, uh, but I didn't get it until I was in middle school, I guess, maybe junior high. Uh, I, the thing that I remember is that uh, I watched Arsenio Hall when I wasn't supposed to, supposed to be in, asleep at that time. Uh, and I think I intermittently played my original Nintendo on it. Uh, the big TV downstairs, I do remember, however, hooking up my Commodore 64 to. Now you may be wondering, where are we going with all this? Uh, but the televisions of your uh, were were always funnily named and the giant wood TV the console TVs that we were used to those were actually called portable TVs because if you believe if you can believe it TVs used to not be portable they used to be built into things walls walls uh, buses I remember some buses had, uh, they would have uh, little TVs built into armrests at bus stations that you could like put money in and then it would turn it on for a certain length of time. Getting way off topic though. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the other day I happened to find a beautiful little television uh, that is as old or older than I am. And I absolutely fell in love with it and wanted to show it to you. And here it is. So this is the Panasonic TR555 Solid State TV. This is a four inch black and white TV uh, that I have attempted to clean and then my cats, whatever. But this is a beautiful portable TV that's as old as I am and probably in better shape than I am considering I was in the military and medically discharged. But that's another story. This has a bunch of features that I find just absolutely amazing. Uh, one is it has uh, honest dials. So oh, just hearing that sound again. And it has the, the just like my TV did up in my room, uh, it has the VHF and UHF broken out separately. Now, why was it done this way? No idea. I've never looked it up. Uh, it also has a very satisfying for the power button, which also controls the volume. And that's really all we've got on this side. Um, on the top, we've got the antenna uh, or the aerial, uh, depending on where you're from and it mounts right into the handle, which I think is a genius way to do it because a lot of the other ones didn't, they didn't have a place to protect it like this. So it would just be mounted like on the side and then you would eventually drop something on it or it would get bumped or it would get closed in a drawer, a cabinet or whatever, and it would get bent and broken and nobody knew where to get a replacement uh, Radio Shack. I don't know where you get one now, but so that's uh, basically all that's on the top. Over on this side, 
We've got a headphone jack, which I still have not checked to see if it is uh, stereo or mono. And then of course we've got our battery compartment, uh, because you may have noticed from the front that it runs on uh, AC, DC, and battery. Uh, and batteries, it would run, and I, this, this takes nine D cell batteries. Uh, that is D as in dog, and I am not going to demonstrate that because I don't want to buy that many D cell batteries ever. Uh, and ordering the spacers for my rechargeable batteries seemed a bit excessive for this video. Uh, but who knows? Maybe if uh, this stays around long enough, I'll get one of those. Uh, but that is it for this side. The bottom is uh, pretty plain and boring. Uh, the back, I have uh, a matching transformer uh, attached on. Uh, this basically allows it for, for me to plug in a coax cable. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have the UHF and VHF antenna. And you can switch it between uh, rod and external. Each of those has switches. We've got the DC 12 volt in. Uh, which this will work off of, there's a plug for it, and you can also plug it directly into uh, a, a car outlet, a cigarette lighter. Um, I forget what they're called now. Uh, we've got, uh, what is it, vertical hold? No, horizontal hold, vertical hold, because you used to be able to tell it, you can get it to scroll one way or the other. Uh, contrast and brightness, which I will never screw with again. I Turned the dial once just to see if it still worked, and then I spent another five minutes trying to get it back to where it was. Uh, and then we've got uh, two little hooks right here and a notch right here, and that's where you would uh, put the the power brick, for lack of a better term, on there. Uh, over on this side, uh, we've got uh, the height and the vertical Lin? Line? I don't remember what it means. Uh, but basically this will help it so that, because the screen, and I'll show you in a minute, I have not messed with those because I don't know what I'm doing, but the right now the picture goes about an inch over here, and I'm pretty sure that's how I would get it back. These bottom two, I am unclear what they are. It is uh, uh, RF. AGC, pretty sure that says AGC, and IF AGC. I got no idea. So there is, there are all of the sides of the thing. So let's let's plug it in and see what happens. So to warn you, I've had to uh, do a little bit of uh, uh, handiwork on here, but it takes a, a normal barrel connector, uh, like you would expect, and uh, barrel connector plugs in there. And then this little beauty is the uh, TY-175P. Uh, it is made specifically for this model and it tells you not to use it with other models. And it basically mounts right in here and then it mounts on there. And then now we've got it mounted. Now I have had to do repairs. Now these are temporary repairs, uh, but it is there was a, a section in the cable that was uh, basically cut up like it had been slammed in something a hoying full of times. And it's got uh, polarized plugs, so one of the plugs is wider than the other one. Now, uh, so this is ready to go. So we can turn it on. And I can't see a thing, so... and static and it's lighting up my hand so here we are watching static or what I like to think of as the universe uh, why do I think of it as the universe because basically what this does is this turns radio waves into a picture now if they are organized by humans it turns that picture into it turns those radio signals into a picture but this is just the background noise of the universe. Just 
something to think about. Now, so we've got a TV. This is way before the digital transition, transfer, transition. This no do TV no more. So I don't have a converter box. So what do we do? We get a VCR. So now, if Ta-da! And I don't think I left uh, an actual tape in there, so let's just go ahead and just throw in this. Random tape that should autoplay. These do just love cutting around. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We've got, we've now got uh, a uh, VCR, which VCRs, this is a absolute dirt cheap model that I think was just left at the house at some point. Uh, but we ended up with this and it is kind of my my last uh, vestige. Uh, for those of you who are curious, it is a Symphonic model VR-701. It, it does the bare minimum, plays VHS tapes. So when I need to watch a VHS tape or I need to convert something that's, uh, let's say uh, people don't want to put on uh, DVD or Blu-ray or even stream online anymore. And this is how I get access to that. <clears throat> so now we've got, uh, we can play uh, VHS tapes into here, uh, but using this same throughput, uh, you could basically use anything on this TV. Now, uh, ideal scenarios for this, for me, would be to either use it as a, oh, I need to monitor something that I'm doing, but I don't want to sit and stare at a screen. I don't know how. Basically using it as a monitor. Not a monitor, computer monitor, but a monitor as in I need to watch the thing happen. Uh, one of the things that I would love to eventually get this hooked up to uh, is once I get the spacers and everything uh, is the security system that I have. Uh, because then if I needed to, if let's say the power went out and the security system is on is on battery backup, but the monitor that I have is not. So, okay, well, I can hook this up, set it downstairs, uh, and then if the power goes out, check that, make sure that we're still safe even when the power's out, which does happen here in Michigan due to wind, snow, rain, most of the time when we lose power, it's the tree knocking things down. But it would still be nice to have uh, a backup ability. And I know that, why don't you just use your phone? Once again, this is much cooler. In my opinion, there are other people who will argue with me. All right, well, let's all go ahead and stop that. And let's say, okay. We don't, we don't want to play VHS tapes anymore. You've gotten rid of your VHS tapes long ago, but you still have this TV. Okay, great. So let's, let's, let's fix that. Okay, so this is my DVD player recorder, uh, PY90DG, uh, for those who are wondering. And let's... Pretty sure that's the on button. Yes. Okay. So now we've got this loading. So this can play DVDs. Now I've I've tested it, and if we want to get even stupider, I could bring in a Blu-ray player, and a Blu-ray player would play through this as well. What is the point to this? Nothing. But let's say that uh, you want to be really weird, like me and you've, you've decided, all right, kids, this week, we're gonna do everything like it's the 1980s. This came out in 1977, but TVs of this age still work just fine. So if we hop in 
the the camper, the trailer, or the the van, the bus, whatever, the car, and you have access to a cigarette lighter, you can plug this in, and then get really weird. Okay, now we've got this plugged in, so we've got a TV. Maybe you bring a Nintendo. Fun thing to note is that you can get car adapters for almost anything. So if you want to play, let's say, your old Nintendo, you can probably get an adapter to plug that into a cigarette lighter in a car. And then you can sit and play Nintendo games on a time-appropriate TV. Now, ultimately, is that a great idea? Probably not. Would your kids be entertained? You know your kids better than I do. But for me, my kids find this stuff hysterical because they know that I am one of the olds. So I have memories of things that they can't even imagine, like watching uh, anything in black and white just mystifies them because it mystified me as growing up when suddenly it was like, oh, I can watch things in color. Because the weird thing is, is that all of the shows that I wanted to watch, with the exception of uh, some select shows, uh, which I think those were in the 90s anyways, but a lot of the shows that I wanted to watch, I watched on a very small TV, which meant that I watched it in black and white, and then eventually I watched it in color, and I was like, oh, these shows come in color. That's amazing. But, what is the point of all this? Nothing. I thought this was a fantastic find. I thought it was interesting, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So, here it is, the Panasonic model TR555. Oh, one more thing. This was a, this was a whole group of Panasonic TVs that basically said, uh, why should your second TV do what your first TV does? It should do more. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So these were called the outsiders because they could go outside. And then once you got outside, you could watch whatever you wanted. One of the advertisements I think says, you can watch the game while you're at the game. Which makes me want to go to a movie and watch a movie while I'm watching the, anyways. It's like space balls all over again. But there we have it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, throw a like down there. If you had one of these, uh, congratulations on being uh, old like me. And uh, go ahead and write a comment down below. Or if you had a different TV and you have the fond attachment to this. Or if you know what this design style is called. Because I just love the... The little, the, the, uh, they look like, what are they called on, on a, on a castle? Ramparts. And it's got the lines between all of this completely unnecessary, but I love the design. Uh, oh, speakers on this side too. Only one speaker. Mono. But that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And as always, play on. No, you're done.